alongside me, as I said, Cass Edwards. Cash, you're going to give us a, a little more insight into how this tournament works. Thank you, Wayne. Yes, so just as the ladies start their uh, practice and warm-ups, all the ladies and men will play 24 games. The interesting thing is it's three blocks of eight on varying lane conditions. The first block of eight will be on long oil, down to 44 feet down the lane, leaving 16 feet of back end. The second block of eight will be on short oil, which is dressed down to 35 feet, which quite a considerable difference. And the third block of eight games is one lane long oil, one lane short oil, which is a real brain teaser for lots of bowlers. And you're going to have to make sure you've got the right equipment on the right lane at the right time. And uh, try and keep the ball in the pocket. As I say, there's so much back end on one lane and very little on the other. So it's a, a testing format for all the bowlers. As you can see, it all got pretty busy down there. At the Roll House Bowling Centre. So day one, this is the women on the short oil. Eight games, remember, on this oil pattern. Try and rack up as many points as possible and try and gain one of those top eight positions once the three squads have been completed. Wayne, well, all these bowlers are national champions from their home federation. This is Kirsten Penny for England. She's the defending ladies champion and is invited back again this year. The other uh, English lady in contention is Nikki Ainge from Leeds, and the men's uh, competitor for the England is Mike Quarry. So Nardin Geisler of Germany leading the way after day one on the short oil. So to the long oil then from day two. Eight games again, remember, on the longer oil pattern. All points count, remember, overall. They will take the scores from the short, the long, and on day three, it will be combined where they will play alternate frames on the long and short patterns. Yeah, very very confusing, really. It's not uh, not ideal, but it, it's supposed to just sort out the best player over all sorts of conditions. Players have to make sure, they, as I say, they get their correct bowling equipment, their right bowling balls with them on the correct lane. Just hope they can make the uh, enough pins to go through the top eight players for the uh, knockout rounds. Quick shot there of how it finished on the long oil. Krista Polonen of Finland leading that squad. So to the combined, and Nadine Geisler of Germany. As you can see there with 1,794, just ahead of Sacco of France. So back to day one, and this was the men's short, where Marco Reviglio of Italy had a good day. Plenty of bowling balls going down those Brunswick synthetic lanes. Brunswick Juro diamond pins as well. Just non-stop bowling all day long at the Roll House Bowling Centre. All gets pretty hectic at these tournaments cast, doesn't it, through the qualifying stages? Well, with players from all over Europe, uh, there obviously there'll be some top players um, uh, rising to the uh, top of the leaderboards where some players from some of the more obscure non-bowling countries will just be here for the uh, for the journey shall we say and the experience of course so today too then on the long haul Marco Revilio of Italy defending his lead from the opening squad on the short day two would turn out to be a good day for Sven Ek from Norway Leading the way from Yanis Stafatos, the holder, remember, from Greece, who won it on home soil last year. And then today three, the combined, the final day of qualifying. Chance maybe for one or two outside the top eight to push their way into those quarter-final positions. And that would turn out to be a good day for Artis Leverkins from Latvia, as you can see, leading from Dimitros Karetsos of Greece, Petri Mananen of Finland in third over the combined. So, quarter-finals then. Quick shot there of the qualifiers. Very quick shot indeed. It was Artus Leverkins of Latvia up against Thomas Gross. Petri Mananen of Finland against Dennis Eklund of Sweden. 
Svenek of Norway against Marco Revilio of Italy and Dimitrios Karetsos of Greece against Alexander Kalika of Ukraine. So the defending champion through to the quarterfinals. And that was the Italian there, Marco Revilio. Dennis Eklund there, the uh, so rather, that was uh, Svenek of Norway, who's up against Revelia. Game one went the way of the Norwegian. Revelia would hit back in game two, 203-179, taking it to the third and final game, which Svenek would come out on top in, scoring a 268. Yeah, just to clarify, when it, it is the best of three games over the uh, quarterfinals and semifinals and final. So it could go 2-1 uh, or 2-zip, depending on how uh, well each player sorts his lane conditions out. That's the Ukrainian there in your picture, Alexander Kalika. He was up against Dimitrios Karetsos of Greece. And it would turn out in the end again to go to the wire. 207-189 game one going in favour of Kalika. Karetsos hitting back with a 202 game in game two against 190. Game three, well, Karetsos doing the business again, scoring 225 to see off Kalika's 177. Wayne, just while the uh, quarterfinals are gone, I'll just give the uh, some lower position results for other uh, players from the UK. Marco Biondi finished 39th from Scott for Scotland. Unfortunately, that was last place. Ryan Press from Northern Ireland was 24th. Darren McLaughlin, 28th from Ireland. And Mike Quarry from England finished in 15th position. So we moved on here to the women's semi-finals. Victory in the quarter-finals for Geisler, the German, over Shahaf Antin of Israel. Kirsten Penny of England, the defending champion, remember, 2-0 winner against Yvonne Gross of Austria. Uh, Krista Polinen of Finland seeing off Petrin Torgerson of Norway and Laura Roney getting knocked out by Maria Tasenko. These are the semi-finals that you're watching now. Kirsten Penny against Krista Polinen. Again, best of three, remember. Game one was pretty tight with the Finn coming out on top 200 to 190. And then Kirsten Penny, the defending champion, Weighing in with a 290 casting in game two. Polonen scoring 233 but losing the second game. So high quality second game in that semi final. And then just eight pins the difference in game three. Sending Mr. Polonen and the Finn through to the final. Yeah, very unfortunate for Kirsten Penny. Um, as you say, shooting a 290 game and then just couldn't follow it up. Other ladies not making the uh, semi-finals. Nikki Ainge of uh, England, third. Mikelliger, 25th from Ireland. And Laura Roney, fifth from Scotland, which was not a bad result. Uh, this is the other women's semi-final. Nadine Geisler of Germany, meaning pretty consistent form throughout the qualifiers, up against Maria Tasenko of Latvia. 216-201, Tasenko took game one. The German hitting back in game two with a 196-169 win. But in game three, it was Tosenko who saw off the German, scoring 198 to 185 to book her place through to the final. So to the men's semi-finals. And Svenek of Norway up against Thomas Gross of Austria. And it was Svenek of Norway who came out on top in that one by two games to one. Dimitrios Karetsos of Greece up against Dennis Eklund of Sweden in the other semi-final. It was a bit more one-sided. That's the Austrian Gross there, who was knocked out by Svenek. 2-1-3, 2-1-6, 2-0-5 for Svenek in that semi-final. Ross scored a 247 in winning game one, but the Norwegian came back well to win games two and three. This more one-sided between Karetsos and Dennis Eklund. The Swede comfortably winning 
by two games to nil, 247, 204, 228, 222. So we're going to see action from the women's and men's finals.